to your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Oh, you know what? You know what? You just, you just taught, you just taught Paul's way for us to be healed. That's it. That's it. You taught the only way. Amen. That in this gospel of grace and this gospel of Christ, we're taught how to be healed. Amen. Really? To seek the Lord. When did you? When did you? When did you tell us that? When did you preach it? Romans 10, 9, and 10. Yes. That is it. Yeah. That is it. That's Paul's only teaching about how to be healed. You believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And you make confession unto him for salvation. Amen. And you're saved. Amen. Why? Because of Paul's preaching. Paul says then instantly, you know you have died with him. You died with him. You were buried with him. Sin was buried with him. Sickness was buried with him. And then as he was raised to newness of life, you were raised to newness of life with him. Amen. As that spirit that raised him to newness of life. Right? Mm -hmm. That same spirit that raised him. That same power that raised him. Now, one with Christ, you were raised with Him with the same power and the same Spirit. So if the same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, then that same Spirit that raised Christ and put Him back together on the slab will revitalize and will renew and will restore your mortal body. That's it. That's Paul preaching on how to be healed. Know your union with Christ. Know you are one with Christ. No, when the Father looks at you, He doesn't see you, He sees Jesus. But when the Father looks at Jesus, He sees you. He's made us one. 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 And I'll tell you what, when I was going through uh, um, the Victory Cancer Walk, when the doctors told me, you have a 2% chance you're going to live. Chances are extremely high, you won't make it past six months. You know what? Fear never gripped me. Amen. Fear never gripped me. But I'm telling you what I did. I'm telling you what I did. I did everything that man told me to do. I started standing. I started commanding. I started getting all the healing scriptures out. And then one by one they came off the wall. They came off the wall. They came off the wall. I only needed one to stand. I only needed one to stand. And that was since the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will revitalize, will renew, will restore your mortal body. I started praising Him. I started worshiping Him. I started giving Him praise and thanksgiving. And then the voice of the Lord came to me and reassured me, you will live and you will not die. Amen. You will not miss a Sunday service. Amen. You know, I lost 75 pounds during that, that victorious walk that Jesus carried me through. People always ask me, what did you do? What did you do? How did you make it through the pain? How did you make it through the pain? How... I don't remember the pain. I focused on the promise. I focused on the promise. My wife, I wish she was here, she would tell you this, this, this truth. That when we were sitting there with, with, uh, with uh, the radiologists or whoever, whatever they're named or whatever they're called, they're going to say week number one, week number two, you're going to feel like you're on the honeymoon. You're not going to feel a thing. No. You're not going to feel a thing. And then they said by, by, by week three and by week four, you're going to feel some things happening and some things changing. By week five and by week six, you're going to be in so much pain. You're going to be in so much pain that you're going to wish your life would end. And you know what? They would call all the time. Do you have any suicidal thoughts? You know, do, do, are, are you thinking, you know, any negative? Wow. What? And then you're seven, and, and in week seven, you are going to feel like you are being burned by the fires of hell itself. And then it's going to continue for several weeks after that. The rebound, the, the rebound effect. I'm telling you, this is what they told me. Good witness for them, though. I, I, amen. 
How's the pain? What pain? They might have said it, but I didn't receive it. Why? Because I received the promise. Mm -hmm. yep. And I didn't focus on any of that other stuff. Yep. I focused on the promise. Mm -hmm. I focused on the promise. Mm -hmm. And you see, that's how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing. Mm -hmm. Hearing the words about the Christ. The gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. Crucified. Died. Buried, raised from the dead. Hearing the gospel about the Christ, faith comes. Faith comes. Faith comes. That faith that tells you now you believe, take it, it's yours. But I'm telling you, I, I, I hope I get to my notes. I hope I get to my notes. Hope I get to my notes. I'm going to get to my notes. I'm going to get to my notes because God, the Holy Spirit gave me these notes. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something tonight. Today. This morning. What time is it? I don't know. Don't listen to another man, please. Don't even listen to me. Don't listen to another man. Listen. Don't, don't even listen to me. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. And... Listen to the truth of the Word of God. Now, here's the thing. The whole Bible is true from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, to Revelation chapter 22, or 21, or 22, verse 22. It's all true. But not all of its truth is for you or for me. God dealt with people at different times and different covenants. So we have to go into the Word of God as led by the Holy Spirit and find our covenant. And you know how I teach, and I don't hear too many people teach this. New Testament does not equal New Covenant. And within the New Covenant, there are two Gospels. There's the Gospel of Grace, and there's the Gospel of Circumcision. Most people don't realize this. The Gospel of Circumcision came from James, came, from James, came, from, came out of Jerusalem. James, in James chapter 2, verse 24, clearly states... You see, it is not only faith in Jesus Christ, but it is also works that justifies you. No, this is not where he says faith without works is dead. This is after that, where he says clearly, you see, that it's not just faith that justifies you. It's also works. And then when you just go to Acts chapter 21, verse 20, and Paul had to go to Jerusalem to have it out with them, right? Because everywhere he went to, sh to share the gospel with the Gentiles, they came and they tried to put him under the law of Moses from James, from Jerusalem. And Jerusalem, and James right there in Acts chapter 21 verse 20 clearly says, Paul, you see how many of our brethren are coming to believe in Jesus Christ. And happily and excitedly he said this, and they're still zealous for the law of Moses. And they're angry with you, Paul. Because they're believing and they're thinking that you're trying to get, trying to get them, trying to get them, what's the word I'm looking for? To forsake. And that's it. Paul said, I'll tell you what, you keep going to the Jews, I'm going to the Gentiles. Could you, could you, could you see the miracle that God said to Ananias? Uh, my hand is on him. I've separated him. He's going to be going to the Gentiles. This is a man, okay, that had papers from the high priest that have papers from the high priest that he can go, Saul can go and rip people out of their homes. Put people in prison. Watch people as they were stoned because he was so zealous for the law. God raised up this man and you would think, okay, you're going to the Gentiles. Why are you going to the Gentiles? Because as they come to know Jesus Christ, you, you're the best I know, Paul. You can let them know all about the law. <laughs> Do you see the miracle there? Yeah. Do you see that? He said to the Galatians, who bewitched you? Who bewitched you? He called the Judaizers dogs and wolves. This was salvation through faith in Jesus Christ, righteousness through Jesus Christ, faith in Jesus Christ, period. Without any works. Without any works. Without any efforts. Just, just by believing. Just by believing. But because people 
Julie, I'm telling you this, you need to know this. You're going to leave this and you're going to know this. Because people just don't understand the fact that there were two Gospels in the Bible. Two Gospels. Look at Paul. I approach Peter to his face. Because he strayed from the truth. He strayed from the truth. He strayed from the truth gospel that he received in Acts chapter 10 before he went to Cornelius' house. Because he was afraid of James. And he referred back to disassembling himself from the Gentiles. And preaching the gospel of circumcision. It's, it's just right there. And so because people don't understand that, realize that they preach, they preach a mixture, a gospel of mixture, where they make it all about us. I'm tired of them making it about me. And I've talked to so many people who are riddled with guilt, shame, and condemnation. Because man has made it all about them. You don't have your healing because you don't believe. Because you're not believing. First of all, my Bible tells me that God, in, in Romans chapter 8, verse 30, it says, God called. I answered. When I answered, He justified me. And when He justified me, he glorified me. He put upon me the same view and opinion that he has about Jesus. So I am never ever going to speak to a man, any man, any woman, any person, in any other way than the fact that they have been glorified by God. I am going to talk to them and speak to them in ways only in, in, in how the Father would speak to Jesus. Because that's the only way the Father would speak to me. So I'm never going to call you what you're not. Or what you're not doing. I'm only going to call you who you are. And remind you of the power to do. I'm not going to tell you. You're not healed because you don't believe. <sighs> it's you want to throw up when I hear that. And people are saying, Pastor Lenny, I just called up the prayer line and... And they said, I need to believe, and I'm not believing. Pastor Lenny, I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing. I said, the next time you call the prayer line and they tell you that, turn it around. Well, what do you mean? What do you mean? Go back to Mark chapter 9. You know what happened in Mark chapter 9? Yes. First of all, the Father said, I believe, but help my unbelief. Okay. So it didn't cancel out the fact that Jesus would heal. Mm -hmm. All right? Remember I, I said, if you want to know... True grace, go to Luke chapter 15, the story about the prodigal and the father. You'll have every answer to your question. But anyway, turn it around. Refer them back to that portion of scripture. Refer it back to the instructors, you know, the followers of Jesus, you know, the, the teachers of Jesus, the preachers, right? Whatever, right? And they went to Jesus and they said, why couldn't we? Heal him. And what did Jesus say to them? You couldn't heal them because of your unbelief. So now the next time they tell you that, turn it around on them. And say, well, you must not be believing either. Because according to Mark, Mark chapter 9, they didn't heal because they didn't believe. Or because they didn't have faith. So, turn it around on them. How about you? you before you pray for me, you believe? You, you have faith? Okay, there you go. Then I'm going to be healed. Turn it around on them. Turn it around on them when they tell you that you can't go to God with uncertainty. You've got to, you've got to know that you know that you know. You know, we, we, our minds are totally renewed. So this is where grace comes into, into being, into play. This is why Jesus healed that son, because grace took over. You know, tur 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 turn their old preaching back on them, where they talk about the, 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 um, the leprous man. Okay? The leprous man who comes to Jesus, he says, well, you know what? Um, I know you can, but I don't know you will. So they use that to show the fact that you see it's God's will, because God healed them. Well, wait a second. That leprous man, he was uncertain. He had some doubt. He didn't know. Well, wait a second. Did Jesus tell him to come back another day? No, he did not. Did Jesus say, listen, come back when you're certain? Mm -mm. Come back when you're, when you're positive. Mm -hmm. Come back when you're full of belief. As long as you're questioning, will I? You don't know it's my will that all be healed. 
So until you come knowing, sorry, come back another day. Mm -hmm. Turn it around on them. Right. You know, when I, when I first got turned on to grace, the gospel of grace, one with Jesus Christ, he became a curse, right? Because cursed is any man that hangs on a tree. To redeem me from the curse of the law of sin, of sin and death. He redeemed me from that. I was like, wow. And, and, and after so many years of thinking that there are none righteous, no, not one. How, remember, it's the truth in the Bible, but it's not the truth for me. It's not the truth for me. And I, I became awakened to my true righteousness and my true holiness. Oh my gosh, and the same spirit. I'll tell you what, healing was in my life like popcorn, like popcorn, like popcorn. And now I was laying hands on people and they were getting healed. And then I said, I know what I got to do. I got to learn more about healing. And I started going, you know, learning more about healing. And all I, all I learned was all the things that hinder you. Oh, man. And doubt. You want to talk about where doubt comes from and unbelief comes from? <clears throat> all the steps, all the things, all of this, all of that. Man. That's why I implore you to go to Luke chapter 15. Jesus himself teaches us what grace is all about. You look at the son. How the son approaches him. How, how the son approaches his father. How disrespectful the son was. How he asked the father. You know, and then the father gives, and then the, and the son goes, and, and, and he squanders, and he squanders, and, he, and he's, he's living with pigs, and he's so hungry, and he, and he I got to go back, I got to go back, I need food, I got to go back, I need food, and he rehearses what he's going to say, he's rehearsing what he, he's rehearsing what he thinks the father wants to hear, he's rehearsing what he, what he thinks is going to be a good prayer, and so, you, you see, he comes, and the father Wow! Runs to him. Doesn't let him say a word. Doesn't let him open his mouth. Hugs him. Kisses him. Embraces him. But he says, uh oh, what's going on here? He doesn't know what's going on. He certainly, he certainly did not expect that reception. Certainly did not. Listen, you need to believe that you receive and you'll have. Well, he didn't believe. See? Grace. Grace overcomes there's a difference between the before the cross preaching, the covenant of law, covenant of grace. And then we see the Father. All right, listen. You're going to be a servant. And you're going to live in this quarter over here, these quarters over here, until you earn your right back into this house. Until you pay for the awful mess that you put yourself in. And, 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 and our family name, what you did to our family name, no. He didn't know what to expect. He, he, he had a rehearsed prayer. He, he just... Ring, robe, shoes, fattened calf. You want to know what real grace is? You line it up with Luke chapter 15. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that would he reap. There's only one scripture, and it's in, it's, in the book, it's in the book of Galatians. And that is so taken out of context. I always do this when I go and preach. How many of you out there, right, have sowed rebellion, have sold, sowed disobedience? You know, you knew, you knew, you knew, but you still, you know, and then all of a sudden you found yourself in a position, God's mercy, right, God's compassion, and you didn't reap what you sowed. And hands go up all over the all over the auditorium. That's grace. Come to the throne of grace where you obtain mercy. You can't take the word of God out of context to fit to fit what you want to teach. And so when you keep the gospel pure, Jesus crucified, died, buried, raised from the dead. And you were with him. He's on the cross. You're on the cross. He's buried. You're buried. Sins, sickness, disease, gone. He's raised the newness of life. You're raised with him the newness of life. That's the gospel. That's it. 
but what if I don't believe? But but what if I don't? But what if I'm not? But what if I don't? But what if I'm not? But what if I don't? But what if I'm not? But what if I don't? But what if I'm not? That's the gospel that works. And there are so many people that are frustrated. So many. I'll, I'll speed through this, okay? All right. Is that okay? Say okay, Pastor Lenny. Okay. I'm going to speed okay. through this. All right. This this is your this is um this is the ribeye steak right here or the tomahawk steak right here. Tomahawk steak, potatoes. This is the meat. This is the meal. You get hungry? I'm hungry. Anyway. <laughs> Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of our glory of God. Number one, we have been justified. We have been justified. Have you been justified? Have you been justified? Well, what does justified mean? What does being made righteous mean? Yeah? Just as I ought to be? Innocent? Right? At peace with God? Fully approved by God? His righteousness is now my righteousness. Fully qualified because of righteousness, justification. So what more do I need to do? What more do I need to do? You need to believe in your righteousness. You need to believe in the greatest forces of, of, of power, the two greatest forces in the life of a believer, love and righteousness. Mm -hmm. Right? Hun, do you have this book? Do you have this book? Here. Okay. All right. Righteous. I'm justified. I am fully... You are so welcome. I am fully qualified. I am fully qualified, period. If I'm fully qualified, well, then what do I need to qualify? What, what do I need to do to qualify? What, what do I need to do to qualify? Believe. Believe you receive. You believe. believe receive. that God raised Jesus from the dead, mm -hmm. confession of my salvation, and I'm one with him. That's it. That's what I believe. That's it. I believe. Justified. We stand with and in perfect peace before God. That's it. Perfect. You're, you're in perfect, we're in perfect peace with Him once we said yes to Jesus Christ. I believe in my heart, God raised Him from the dead. I make confession unto my salvation. I'm saved. From that second on, from that moment on, I'm at peace with God. I'm at peace with God. Peace between individuals, harmony, concord, you know, security, safety, prosperity, felicity. I don't know what felicity means. I guess it means peace. <laughs> I'm at peace with him. He's never mad at me. He can never get mad at me. He can never get upset with me. Why? Because he established me in Christ. And he established me in righteousness. And he sealed me with the anointing. So when he looks at me, he sees the new creation that he created. Sin is not an issue. Do you understand that? You die. How could you die? How could you say you died to sin? You, it, it's dead. It's gone. It's buried. Do you know where sin exists in the life of a believer? Right here. Right here. Instead of speaking about sins, preachers, they should be speaking about righteousness and holiness and blamelessness and perfection and completion. That's new creation realities. Sins and iniquities I remember no more. They didn't read that in. They didn't read that in, in, in Hebrews chapter 8, Hebrews chapter 10. They didn't read Romans chapter 8 where he says, I've glorified you. I have now glorified you. You have been glorified. I'm glorified. You're glorified. Hallelujah. We stand in perfect peace. We are positioned in Jesus. Right? We have access to this grace. We are positioned in Jesus, in Christ, the anointed one and the anointed, in grace. This is the thing. What is grace? His unmerited favor, his, uh, you know, getting what, I don't know. There's so many definitions of grace, but grace is simple for me. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. He doesn't say grace. He could say the gospel of grace, but he says the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ is the gospel of grace. Christ is grace. The anointed one and the anointing. 
believing in the anointed one and the anointing, knowing that the anointing one and the anointing is living in you, is living in me. The gospel of Christ, the gospel of the anointed one and the anointed. What is grace? Everything. Therefore, Romans chapter 8, verse 32, how could not God with Christ not freely give you everything, not freely give you all things, because grace is Christ, the gospel of Christ. You know, let's skip that. Let's go to here. I'll put more notes, you know, uh, expound, expound on things during the week. Many Christians have been taught from erroneous, well-intentioned, well, well-intentioned, I believe, ministers, give, they've been given misinformation, and because of that, it's like many Christians have treated their walk or treated their relationship with God, you know, or their stepping stone to healing, like going to a casino and playing the slots. That's pretty harsh, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yep. But that's what it is. You know, Lori and I visited my son Stephen uh, in New Hampshire last week, and we passed a... Um, a casino resort, I forget the name of it is, but it was packed. It was packed. You know, and uh, I know my, at the time I had some family members that always would go. And be honest with you, be honest with you, Pastor Lenny at one time walked into a casino. I did walk into a casino. I walked through a casino, you know. And I, I'm, you know, I'm like, whoo, look, working the slots, working, and they got the buckets full of quarters. But you know, but 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 religion has has reduced it down to the fact where, if I bring enough, if I bring enough coins with me, mm -hmm. you know, if I bring enough coins with me, as I enter into the slot machine, if I bring enough coins with me, if I've done enough work, if I put in enough effort, and they look at their work and they look at their effort and they go before the slots and this is God, right? And they're putting a quarter in it and putting a handle. And they put another quarter in, and they put the handle in. Another quarter, put the handle in, put it in, until there's no more in it. They're just hoping that something would line up, you know, the, the three bars would line up. But, but it didn't. Ah, I didn't do enough work. I didn't bring enough effort, you know. I'll come back another day. I'll come back another day. I had somebody just this morning tell me, I've been listening to a certain healing ministry for 20 years now, and I'm not healed. And after listening to them for 20 years, I'm convinced of one thing. That healing is totally decided upon God. He decides who and He decides when. I wonder if it's because of misinformation that comes with the gospel. But I answered it back. I said, you are 100% right. God has determined who. God has, has determined when. God has determined if. And He determined that 2,000 years ago on the cross. His cross was the answer. When, who, it's answered. There's no special children. My family's not special. Cancer, colonic inertia, alopecia, I mean, and, and so many other things. If I keep on playing and asking, perhaps I'll eventually win. If I keep on asking, if I keep on coming, and, and, and maybe one time, Something's going to be right. I'm going to ask right. I'm going to get it right. I'm going to get it right. You know, maybe the belief issue will, will be done away with, and maybe all these other issues will fall into place. And if I keep on coming and come with a new set of quarters, and I and I keep making, you know, making my request, perhaps, 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 due to a wrong understanding, we continue to leave until we build up more coins, and we can come back and try again. I am righteous. I am at peace with God. I am standing in right, right standing. I am standing right in the middle of grace. God put me there. He established me in Christ. I am fully qualified. I understand I am a joint heir. All that the Father has is mine, only because in faith in Jesus Christ. And I will never speak to anybody other than, here's the second book I wrote, I am, I can, I have. I will never address them in any other way outside of they are, 
They can and they have. A position in readiness. This is this is an awesome book. You don't have that one. This just came out on Friday. Okay? Just came out on Friday. So look at that. 30 minutes. 30 minutes, guys. You can sit through Pastor Lenny for 30 minutes. And so now I want to encourage you. The gospel. The gospel of Christ. The gospel of grace. Where it was all about him. You know how many times if I ask you. If you heard somebody preach from Isaiah chapter 53, mm -hmm. everybody's going to raise their hands. And everybody's going to say, oh yeah, Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5, by his stripes we are healed. Right? That's, how many of you know Isaiah chapter 53 verse, verse 10? It's more significant than that. And well, No, I don't know what that says. Well, this is what Isaiah chapter, you know what Isaiah is because I preach it, right? Yep. And you've read it and you look at it now. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10, is amazing. It says that the Father looked upon Jesus' travail, Jesus' work, effort, and toiling, and the Father was satisfied. See, the Father is satisfied. Jesus satisfied the Father. There's nothing we need to do. No work. No sacrifice that we need to make. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I make confession unto him for my salvation. The same power that raised him from the dead dwells in me and gives life to my mortal body. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. We worship you and we praise you. We give you glory. We thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for Jesus.